to Inside Sports. I'm Marty Adler reporting from Inside Harness Racing. The call to the post. For racehorse owners, it's supercharged with emotion. The sound that sends chills racing up and down their spines. It's the end of getting ready. The start of getting going. Of speed, action, strategy. And for some, the thrill of victory. Owning a harness racehorse provides 50,000 North Americans with a chance to be a player in a major spectator sport. To get away for a time from the pressures of everyday life and to include their families in an exciting outdoor activity everyone can enjoy. Plumbing contractor Frank Grandinetti works hard all day and it's sometimes hectic, but it's at night that things really get exciting. Race night is exciting. You watch your horses warm up, after they warm up, they go to the post, and when they're racing for that minute, two minutes, whatever it is, it's a very exciting two minutes. Well, what makes me really excited about this sport is you get to love these horses. I made a lot of money in horse racing. I didn't invest a lot of money. It's better than stocks and bonds. I like to go to the qualifiers. It gets you away from your business, and I'll tell you, it's really a relaxful thing to watch these horses run. Now to Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island, where John and Chris Curry have their horse, General's Gate, entered in the biggest race of the year, the Charlottetown Driving Park Gold Cup and Saucer. But before the fun comes the work. The Currys operate their own business, supplying fuel to all of eastern Prince Edward Island. You can't tell your customer that you... I'll get you later on in the day if they're out of oil and it's minus 20 degrees, you, you have to go. And how do the owners of a fuel business let off steam? <laughs> Horse racing, what else? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's our, 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 our fun and our, our uh, stress reliever. Yeah, it's a relaxing break. Yeah, for, for the both of us and, and our boys. It's the same as a business venture. You lay some capital down to, to make the initial purchase and you train them and you stake them and hoping that you will, you know, get a return on, on your investment. You fall in love with them, they're, they're become like almost pets. <laughs> and it's nice to, to win now and then, and, but you you got to be able to accept your losses. It's the same as anything, and, and if you can't, you know, you, you shouldn't be in the business because uh, that's part of the game. You don't always win. On this night, General's Gate finishes in the money a respectable third. After a major victory with Magical Mike, owner David McDuffie remains philosophical. So I'm in the insurance business, so we're, uh, we're taking risks all the time, and I guess that's what we do uh, in the horse business. We go out and buy a colt, and we don't know what we've got, but uh, uh, it's a lot of fun to develop them. I mean, we've been at it a long time and have a lot of fun at it. It's a game of great highs, great lows. Uh, I don't think that you can ever reach uh, anything in life more exciting than winning a major horse race. Hospitals, schools, restaurants, and stores are counting on Lon Frischone. His Deli Boy Foods distributes 500 tons of meat a week, and that's a lot of bologna. How does he cope? My son and I both uh, are harness racing enthusiasts, and we both drive, we both pick out horses, and we both love the sport, uh, but we also know that... Uh, uh, we have a family business that we have to uh, keep going in, so we spend all day doing our business, and then in the evening for the diversion and for the release from the tensions of the day, uh, we turn to harness racing. Every year is a new uh, opportunity to bring on a young horse that could be a future champion or uh, a failure and uh, it's a challenge every day that we go to a race. It's a challenge every day that we go to a sale. It's a great diversion for the family to come to the track and go to the stall and pet the horse and feed the horse. And, and, and it's a great uh, release for some people. You did a magnificent job.
a breeder's tribute to his own horse racing family, George Leroy explains how it feels to raise a $100,000 champion. I'm just a little bit high, okay? His great-grandmother was mine. And his mother so happened that she passed away. She died two days after she folded this colt. Every horseman's dream is to have a good horse. And this is a tremendous horse. Powerful and game to the core. In harness racing, there are victories and there are victories. And some say the sweetest victories are those which follow defeats. My most exciting moment in harness racing has been with a horse called Streaking Skipper. He went for about 51 races without winning a race. And finally, one day I remember saying to him, Skipper, if you just win this one race, we're going to put you out, uh, you know, we'll retire you. And I said that to him, and he won that race, and it was so exciting. It's the involvement with the uh, trainers, it's the involvement with the drivers, and it's the personal connection with the horse that make it so much more exciting than just going to the racetrack and betting on the horse. I think that you feel much more fulfilled and uh, much closer to the sport if you actually own an interest in the horse that's racing. Like Di Vincenzo, Joe and Helen Dunsmore entered harness racing by buying a mare in foal. Her first foal was nothing special, but her next foal, Lifetime Dream, lived up to her name spectacularly as a five-year-old winning the $330,000 Breeders' Crown Trot. She was always a spunky thing out in the field, and, and uh, we, we thought right away that she would be something special. As a two-year-old, the Dunsmore's dream mare was a nightmare. So nervous when trailered off the farm, she just couldn't race without making a break. Then Dunsmore remembered an old trick his father taught him. I bought a couple of goats, and we put the goats to, with, them, with her, and uh, it was a love affair right from the start. She, she just... Uh, Seemed to settle right down. We qualified her the following week after we got the goats, and, and we, we just never looked back. My wife, Helen, and I uh, sit out in the evenings and watch the, uh, the babies play out in the field, and, and uh, I don't think uh, there's any better sport in the world, really. It's a lifetime dream. There's just no doubt about it. My wife named her perfect. Some owners breed their champions. Others buy them at public auction. We caught up with Joe Conan at a yearling sale in Michigan where his Wolverine Acres stable has been a dominant player in local stakes with an almost endless list of champions. Rockefeller, he paced in 54, he made about 250,000. Crashland, paced in 54, he made 200,000. SF Silver Spoons made 200,000, paced in 54. Uh, W.A. Moxie had a record of 54, made 150,000. Uh, Darwin, 300,000. Jeff's Playboy, 350. Jeff's sister, 235. There's not too many people to do it for an investment. In my opinion, they'd like to make money. Everybody wants to make money doing it, but they really do it because they enjoy it and they want something to do. They want to have something to do with their family. And most of them like to bring their whole family to the races. It's Hamiltonian Day at the Meadowlands. And just for the day at this most urban of racetracks, fans and owners alike can relive the country fair routes of the great trotting classic. Carlisle Smith and sons Tim and David have a horse named Gumball competing in the race. I don't think there's too many more exciting things than to uh, take a two-year-old that uh, you know is just a baby and, and uh, having him turned over to somebody and see him nurture and, and uh, mature and train and then see him come down the stretch and, and uh, ultimately win for you. And of course the money's nice that, that you get, but uh, really the, the thrill of the sport is, is uh, having a top horse. I like to wager, there's no question about that. I, I like to watch the horses race, whether they are my own horses or not, they're, they're exciting. It's the sport itself that, that I think drives a person. I used to have a riding horse when I was 13 and we were show jumping. 
And uh, when I was 18, my father decided instead of uh, the riding horses, he wanted to get into the harness sport. Photographing the greatest of the great in action and at rest, Thoris recalls the high point of her harness racing career. But I think my most exciting moment was um, a couple of months ago in Freehold when I won an amateur race, which uh, was a paramutual race, and uh, I happened to win it. And I never felt such excitement in my whole life before. Partners in harness horse ownership, as well as in their own manufacturing business, the Carpenter Brothers are as competitive at work as they are at play. Clapp & Haney Tool is the world's largest manufacturer of diamond tip cutting tools for the automotive industry. What you find in the plant is a lot of automotive equipment. We can turn the lights off at, uh, say, noon on Saturday, and these machines will run while we're at the racetrack. On a typical race day, uh, we all go to work that day. Uh, if we got to sneak out of there maybe at 4.30 instead of 5.30 or 6 o'clock, we usually run home, shower, and change clothes and uh, head for the airport and uh, jump on the charter plane and away we go to Toronto or the Meadowlands or wherever we happen to be racing that night. We've got a lot of horses racing and uh, we don't miss any. We're always there. Once we got into it, we wanted to win. And what the, if you want to win, the price usually goes up. So we went from uh, overnights type horses to stake type horses. Uh, at this level, they're just a great bunch of people. Uh, everybody's trying to achieve the same thing. They've all got a dream to have a great racehorse, and that's just what we're trying to do. It's a great release for people that are in pressure positions. Uh, great way to relax, uh, to go out to the track, to own a horse, and to be part of the whole racing industry. Being part of a major international sport is what attracted real estate developer Mal Burroughs to harness racing. <laughs> Enjoyment and relaxation yeah, is that's, plenty. That's pretty good. And, and, and participation, being able to participate in a particular sport. What was your most exciting moment in the sport so far in your brief career? Oh, about uh, five minutes ago. John Campbell with the favorite on the inside and me parked on the outside and, and uh, my filly just kept right on trying. These races is what excites me. A race like the one we just had here uh, almost give you a heart attack. <laughs> well, I'm nervous every race. I, I don't. I get excited on every race. I don't care if it's for two thousand dollars or two hundred thousand. Doesn't doesn't make a bit of difference. This is what it's all about. Uh, being able to have a horse that could come out win a race like this. It's just the thrill of all time. And this is what I, this is why people own horses. Well, it's very exciting. It can be very exciting. The highs are very high but there are lows to it too but I think just for the just to see your horse finish that that line and win uh, be down there in the winner's circle that that feeling there's nothing else that I know of that that really uh, is quite equals that Shirley and Arthur Levin are the parents of eight and own an international corporation a world leader in costume jewelry sales. In just a short time, their harness racing operation has become one of the top earning stables in North America. My husband uh, uh, is a tremendous claimer. He claims the racehorses, and I buy the babies. He's very good at what he does, and I, I, I found success in, with the baby horses, so we make a good match. In the backstretch at the Little Brown Jug in Delaware, Ohio, we caught up with Jan Snyder and found out her most exciting racing moment. My most exciting moment in the harness racing was last year when uh, my filly, out of court, won the two-year-old Highest Sire State uh, Championship final going for $100,000. And what made it so great is it was in front of my home track at Scioto Downs, and everybody in my family was there to experience with me. I love it. I have a trainer's license. I love to get out and jog and train. I plan on being in it as long as I live. Owner after owner confirms that harness racehorses are an investment they love, an investment secured with friendships, family, and deep attachment to the horses themselves. I got into this sport six years ago because I was looking for a hobby to do with my daughter. And uh, I don't have a son, so I couldn't go out and play football with her. I couldn't go and play basketball with her. But I like to gamble, so I knew I could go horse racing with her. And 
and we love going to the farm and we've had uh, great trainers and great partners and tonight in all honesty as I wanted this race for this horse the schmaltzy as that sounds this horse was the best horse on the track last year and it's had nothing but problems this year and uh, she deserved the win tonight. Peter Galazian's company, Katz Communications, employs 1,700 people and sells over $2 billion worth of advertising time each year. I work in a very, very competitive environment uh, here in New York City, um, and harness racing forms the other aspect of what I call uh, a, a balanced life for myself. Uh, it, it gives me the same thrill of competing, but it, it does it in, in a more pleasant way um, I like to visit uh, the barn before the race. I enjoy being there early. I enjoy getting psyched for the race. Um, I like to look at the program. I like to think about how we're going to, to do. And if I'm right, I'll enjoy the night more that evening than most other things I can do. Irving Horwitz retired from his retail drugstore chain to full-time involvement in racing. I'm not retired, I'm self-employed in a harness business. I got into it about uh, 17, 18 years ago because I figured I wanted something to do in my retirement and it's worked out great. I've enjoyed it, I've had lots of fun. In this business, there's, like anything else, there's the ups and downs. The ups are very high and the downs can be a little low, but it's a lot of fun. I don't tell them how to train the horses, I don't tell them how to drive the horses. I just go down and see what's going on. I say harness racing is uh, basically for anybody. Uh, I know the 25 to 45 year old group are now getting involved in that uh, business. And it could, you can go into it in a non-expensive way by going in with a, little group, a few people and form a little syndicate. Or if you have a lot of bucks and you want to go down to yearling sale and uh, plug in a lot of money. But the best way is to get a horse that's racing so you can afford to, when you do buy a yearling, is to pay for both of them. So the horse should make enough money to pay for two horses. Full-time optometrist Jim English sees patients from 9 to 5. But before going to work, he trains his racehorses. And after work, he often drives in harness races at local tracks. Harness racing for me is a very pleasant uh, alternate to my regular business. With harness racing, I get a lot of physical activity, exercise, fresh air, uh, kind of a mental uh, relief because I do all... Uh, all the training and some of the driving and some of the shoeing and part of the vet work and so it's a challenge. I used it as a uh, family activity. I brought, raised my kids in it. They, we were going to the track uh, about once a week while my kids were growing up. Uh, they were jogging horses at an early age. Stayed right with it right, right to college. I got uh, started with uh, Morgan horses and originally the plan was to have the Morgans along with the standard breads, but uh, after a few years of racing rather than showing, I switched over exclusively to standard breads. And the big difference is when you come out of the show ring and you finish fourth or fifth or second or third or excused from the class, you don't know exactly why. But at the end of the mile in the harness race, you know where your horse finished and everybody else does. And there's no question about it. High heels and a party dress don't deter Robin Shad from removing her filly's tongue tie and head pole as they head into the winner's circle. Well, on a night like tonight, I guess you could say that. I mean, Super Night is it's unexplainable. And, and this was a night for glitz, and I wanted glitz, and I wanted my filly to win, and she did. I've, I've got it all. You work really hard for this. Um, as a groomer, a trainer, you work all week, and your rewards are when you race. And when your horse wins, there's nothing like it. I mean, you get, you get her nose across the wire first, and... It, it's exhilarating. That's what it's about. What it's about for entrepreneur Jack Eisenstein is buying a filly at auction for $60,000 and the very next day having her win a major race and make $50,000 back for him. My wife started reading stories in the paper about this woman bought a horse for 4200 named Bates Sim and we won all kinds of money and this other guy won a bought it. I said, well, why don't we take a chance at this? And the very next day, um, we decided well, why not run this horse for 100000 So we ran out to Windsor and we were just, we had the worst post edition of the, of the group and we told the people that, um, why don't you just take her to the back of the bus and just see what pieces she could pick up without hurting her so we can get, you know, a week later we'll regroup and see what we can do with her. And sure enough, she picked up all the pieces and we want it all. 
we were so excited we couldn't believe it. I think it's a lot safer than people think. Now they have insurance for horses, and they just, if you treat it like a business, it's just another business. And uh, you know, with a little luck like anything else, you need luck in a regular business, you can go a long way. Behind all the great racehorses, there are great racehorse owners who know that winning requires judgment, skill, teamwork, and a little bit of luck, who admit that there are twists and turns on the road to victory, and who will tell you over and over again that it's all worth it. What's yeah, it like? it's like an honor. The thrill of watching your horse win, it's indescribable. I'm just a little bit high, okay? So, how does it feel? Right, right? <laughs> you get her nose cuts while you're first, and it's exhilarating. That's what it's about. Come on in! Work her, Joey! Work her, Joe! It's a very exciting two minutes. It's just the thrill of all time. And this is, what I, this is why people own horses. I don't even bet my horses. I figure the excitement is just to see this horse cross the finish line first. And it's sort of just, it's just a high, that's all. Now that you've seen the many faces of winning, I think you'll agree that an investment in harness racing is one of the most exciting and rewarding investments that you could make. On behalf of our co-sponsors, the North American Harness Racing Marketing Association Canada, and Harness Horseman International, let me extend an invitation to you to contact us for more information. Anytime during normal business hours, pick up a phone and call Fred Noe, Executive Vice President of the United States Trotting Association, or Ted Smith, Executive Secretary of NARMA Canada, or Mike Izzo, Executive Director, Harness Horseman International. They'll be happy to answer your questions and help you get pointed in the right direction. If you don't have one already, ask for a copy of the companion brochure, Get Into Harness Racing, a guide for new owners. It's got other essential facts and figures that are important to helping you get started the right way. With this information, you'll take the first step toward action, thrills, camaraderie, and your share of the more than $400 million in purse money that waits for you in the winner's circle when you join the many winning faces of standard bred owners.